Hey, hey guys. Okay, here we are today. We're going to finish up chapter 12 and then we're going to do chapter 13. Two very, very major themes inside the book of Corinthians. However, chapter 13, you're going to notice is only 13 verses long. So, um, well, you have the advantage of seeing how long this video is going to be, but um, we're going to make it manageable for sure so that we can get chapter 13 into this week. So that will prepare you to be ready for your leadership journal activity on Friday. Okay, so let's dive in. Let's pray and get started. Dear Lord, thank you so much for <clears throat> your word. And thank you so much for the things that you teach us in your word. Thank you for this class, for the faithfulness that they've had in um, their homework, in getting everything in, for being very communicative and making this work. I pray that you um, give them the motivation and the focus to continue to do well and to do even better every time. And I just pray that you protect them spiritually, that you help them to grow, and that you work in their lives. I pray that you speak through me. Um, please clean our hearts and that you don't let it be my words, but that they're your words, Lord, so that <clears throat> they're the proper thing that you want us to know from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's do it. Okay, here we are in chapter 12. We're not going to read the whole chapter again, but we are going to read from 14 to verse number 31 to get into the stuff that we're going to be speaking about today. In order to review what we talked about um, yesterday, we talked about get Paul at the beginning of 1 Corinthians 12. I can't speak all of a sudden. Great. That 1 Corinthians 12 at the beginning, Paul gave a clear way to discern if someone claiming that they have spiritual gifts is really from God or that certain religions are really from God, really have the Holy Spirit, and that is what? The main verse there is verse number three. What do they say about Jesus Christ? No man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Okay, but no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. He's not going to deny Jesus if he really has the Spirit of God in him. Okay? Um... Verse number seven is super, super important as well. Pero a cada uno le es dada la manifestación del Espíritu para what? Provecho, okay? For the profit of all. So remember, why do we have a spiritual gift? It's not to make us better than other people, to make other people feel bad about um, what they do or don't do for God. But the spiritual gift is there to profit the body of Christ. Okay, verse number four was talking about the diversity of gifts, but it's all of the same spirit. And verses five through 13 talk about the giving of spiritual gifts that it all comes from who? The Holy Spirit. In order to get into this today, I do want to run really quickly over to Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. So go ahead and go with me to Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. This is a really good passage to write, a really good verse to write in your Bible in 1 Corinthians 12 because this connects very, very directly with spiritual gifts. It says, Y él mismo constitu constituyó a unos apóstoles, a otros profetas, a otros evangelistas, a otros pastores y maestros, a fin de perfeccionar a los santos para la obra del ministerio, para la edificación del cuerpo de Cristo. Hasta que todos lleguemos a la unidad de la fe y del conocimiento del Hijo de Dios a un varón perfecto, a la medida de la estatura de la plenitud de Cristo, para que ya no seamos niños flu fluctuantes, llevados por doquiera, de todo viento de doctrina, por estratagema de hombres que para engañar emplean con astucia las artimañas del error, sino que siguiendo la verdad en amor, crezcamos en todo en aquel que es la cabeza. Esto es Cristo. Guys, that verse, those verses right there actually tie in verses 12, I mean, chapter 12 of Corinthians with chapter 13 of Corinthians because it's going to start talking about, especially in verses 14 and 15, it's going to bring in that chapter 13 of Corinthians. Para que, yo no, para que ya no seamos niños flu, 
fluctuantes, meaning like you go up and you go down based on the doctrine that you hear. It's the same thing that he said to them in verse number 12. Before you guys were carried away by the idols was what he said in verse number 2 of, of chapter 12. Sabes que cuando erais gentiles se, extro, eh, se os extraviaba, llevándoos como se os llevaba a los ídolos mudos. Okay, so he's saying now you're not going to do that. And he's actually going to say the same thing in 13. I used to be a, a child and I would act as a child. Now I'm not a child anymore and I need to act like I'm not a child anymore. And then verse number 15. Sino que siguiendo la verdad en amor, crezcamos... En todo en el, en aquel que es la cabeza, esto es Cristo. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to give honor to him through love that Christ is the head of the church and then we are the rest of the body. So let's get into that part today. Look at verse number 14 in chapter 12 of Corinthians. Además, el cuerpo no es un solo miembro. So look what we're looking at. It's all one body. Okay, so we're going to go into this while we're reading it, Okay. It's all one body. And guys, think about it. The body, and this was he's going to talk about Paul, the body cannot function if the hand is trying to do what the foot is supposed to do or the eye is trying to do what the ear is supposed to do, right? All the body works together, and it has to work together in unity. If I'm trying to listen to something that I'm not seeing or whatever, what happens? Confusion happens, right? So everyone needs to do their part so the body functions well. Look what it says in verse number 14. Además, el cuerpo no es un solo miembro, sino muchos. Si dijere el pie, porque no soy mano, no soy del cuerpo. ¿Por eso no será del cuerpo? Doesn't make any sense, right? Y si dijere la oreja, porque no soy ojo, no soy del cuerpo. ¿Por eso no será del cuerpo? Si todo el cuerpo fuese ojo, ¿dónde estaría el oído? Si todo fuese oído, ¿dónde estaría el olfa olfato? Right? Ok, so... Everybody needs all the parts. Más ahora Dios ha colocado los miembros, cada uno de ellos, en el cuerpo como Él quiso. Remember, God is the only one, guys, that can see until the end. That's why He has the wisdom. He knows how every part is going to work together to accomplish His voluntad on this earth. We need to trust Him in that and be the part of the body that God has called us to be. It says it, that Él quiso, right? So then look at what it says in verse number 19. Porque si todos fueran un solo miembro, ¿dónde estaría el cuerpo? Pero ahora son muchos sus miembros, pero el cuerpo es un solo. Ni el ojo puede decir a la mano, no te necesito, ni tampoco la cabeza, los pies. No tengo necesidad de vosotros, right? Just like in the church. We all have to work together and we can't say like, mm, no, your job isn't important. My job is, I don't need you. Yes, we need each other. We have to work together. That's the body of Christ, okay? You cannot please God just by you being a good Christian, right? The hand isn't going to be doing something that the other parts of the body don't work together on, okay? You got to work together in unity. Look what it says in verse number 21. Ni el, no, number 22, perdón. Antes bien, los miembros del cuerpo que parecen más débiles son los más necesarios okay so it is saying like those that look like um they're not that important are the most necessary so that goes back to whoever will be first has to be last right you may look at it and say like well i don't want to be anything because i can't be the important person i can't be the pastor or whatever or the person that gets all the praise for doing everything i don't want to be the person you know in the back that does the bathrooms or whatever and, and nobody ever cares about no Look what it says. Antes bien, los miembros del cuerpo que parecen más débiles son los más necesarios. Okay, think about think about your thumbs, right? Little part of your body. Okay, like try to go five minutes without using your thumbs and see how frustrating that is, okay? So it seems like a little part of your body, but it's a huge huge task and job in your body, okay? It's important. And it's the same thing with the job that God gives us. You may say, like, huh, nah, let somebody else do that. No, it's your job, and it may not look important, but it is super important for the body to work together. Think about it. Think, pick one part of your body that just would decide not to work today and how that would slow you down and how that would mess up your work. What if your eyes didn't work today? What if your mouth didn't work today? What if your nose didn't... 
your great your nose your nose didn't work today what if your ears didn't work today what if your neck wasn't working today right what if your stomach wasn't digesting its food today what if your feet didn't feel like walking today what if your feet felt like walking today but your knees didn't feel like bending today right how messed up your body would be okay then apply that to the church god didn't by accident compare us to a body god on purpose compared us to a body and so he's saying like just like that the church would be so much more effective the body of christ would be so much more effective if every part was willing to do its job then imagine what we could accomplish on this earth for god imagine what the holy spirit could do through us if we were all focused on being the most the, the most excellent part of the body that God made us. If God said, okay, you're going to be the thumb and you were the best thumb that you could be. And then the other person was the elbow and they were the best elbow that they could be. And then the next person was the eyes that were the best eyes that they could be. And every part of the body was trying to be the best that they could be for God. Just like in Philippians, it says that you aprobar la excelencia right? What if we did that? Could you imagine the work that the, 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 the body of Christ would do on this earth, right? Okay, so that's what it means by we're all one body. Let's look at the next part. So 22 is basically like an introduction into 23 through 27, which says staying unified no matter what your gift is. Look what it says. Y aquellos, a aquellos del cuerpo que nos parecen menos dignos a este dos vestimos más dignamente y los que en nosotros son menos decorosos se tratan con más decoro okay so just like God always works those that you think are going to be the best are actually the least and then those that you think are the least are actually the best okay it's humility it's always opposite with God look what it says in verse number 24 porque los que en nosotros son más decorosos no tiene necesidad, pero Dios ordenó el cuerpo dando más abundante honor al que le faltaba. Um, because of what it says, para que no haya des, desavenencia en el cuerpo, that there's no conflict, okay, over who gets what gift, right? Um, sino que los miembros todos se preocupan los unos por los otros, but look what it says in English, I'm going to read it in 24 and 25. For our commonly parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more honor of, more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Okay, so he set it up so that we could all care for each other to work together and help each other do our part super super well okay you don't just worry about the fact that you're the thumb and you're going to do what the thumb is supposed to do but encourage the people that are the thing, other fingers encourage the people that are the hands right and and make sure that you're working together so everything can function well okay what it says in number 26 de manera que si un miembro padece todos los miembros se duelen con él y si un miembro recibe honra todos los miembros con él se gozan. Vosotros, pues, sois el cuerpo de Cristo y miembros cada uno en particular. Okay, so what does it say first? We are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are the body of Christ and we're different members that come together in unity. That's what God expected of us. Okay, and then the last part of this chapter is the list of gifts, and, and we're not going to get into today, you know, like what all of them mean or anything like that, but just an encouragement to search out what your gifts are, okay? Search out what your gifts are from God. Look what it says in verse 28, y a unos puso Dios en la iglesia primeramente apóstoles, luego profetas, los terceros maestros, luego los que hacen milagros, después los que sanan, los que ayudan, a los que administran, los que tienen don de lenguas, okay? So, um, what is he saying in all of that? He's saying, look, there's different jobs, right? They have the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the miracles, the healers, the helpers, the administrators, 
and those that speak in tongues. Okay, some of those still apply today, some of those don't apply today, some of those we're not sure of when God would use those, right? But we do know that you can seek out yours. Are you an encourager? Are you a helper? Are you one that manages things well? Okay, administration is a huge one, guys. Can you organize? Can you direct? Can you do it in a way that's loving, right, um, to get things done? Uh, are you going to be a teacher? Are you know? Are you going to be a, a person that prays for someone? Um, seek out what God wants you to do. Next packet, I believe, we're actually going to do, just like this time you're doing like a love language test, there's actually a very, very good spiritual gifts test. Because, yes, it's very easy for me to say, use your gift for God. But if you don't know your gift, well, go figure it out. Well, you don't know how to figure it out, right? Okay, so this test really directs you. But now you guys are should be coming to a point in your life and in your spiritual walk with God that you're we and we talked about this when we did the doctrine what is your spiritual gift you should be able to be picking out things you don't just have one you don't just have one okay um you have more than one spiritual gift whether it is being an encourager of somebody being someone that is dependent on prayer whether it is somebody that's always there to help whenever you ask them to no matter if it's to clean the bathroom decorate a christmas tree clean the windows serve the snack whatever it is if it's an administrator someone that can look at it and be like okay we need a program here and this is how we're going to do it i'm going to recruit people to do it right you guys have a bunch of spiritual gifts use them okay but we're going to do it that test it is part of how to analyze ourselves. Okay, look what it says in verse number 29. <clears throat> so I, okay, listen carefully, Porta Flavor. 29 and 30 through 31 are super cool verses, and they just hit me like this. Because, guys, you guys have to understand something. I've told you guys this before. The original text of the Bible does not give you chapters, okay? So chapters were not chosen by God. Men chose the chapter, so significa que okay. somebody, a man came and said verse, these verses from verse number 1 to verse number 31 are going to be a chapter. We're going to call it verse number 1 to verse number 31 of chapter 12. But actually in the Bible it all comes together. Okay, why is that important? Because I think verse 31 applies a lot to chapter 13. And a lot of times when you read chapter 13, you don't read verse 31 from chapter 12 but you gotta see how it connects it's so beautiful so look at verses 29 to 31 son todos apostoles son todos profetas todos maestros hacen todos milagros tienen todos dones de sanidad hablan todos lenguas interpretan todos procurar pues los dones mejores Mas yo os muestro un camino aún más excelente. He said, go ahead and, and look for the best gifts to have, right? But I'm going to show you a more excellent way. And what is that? What is the most excellent way? Dun, 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 dun. It's chapter 13. To do whatever God calls you to do. And to do it with love. Guys, I'm going to introduce chapter 13 to you right now instead of in a couple of seconds to tell you this. My desire for you is that you find what God wants you to do in life in every etapa of your life. And that you do it for his glory and you do it with all the love that you can get into your heart. What I mean by that is this. I don't just say that you're going to seek out one thing that God wants you to do for the rest of your life. Like, okay, my life doesn't start until I become a doctor. My life doesn't start until I become the architect that I want to be. My life doesn't start until I become the artist I want to be. My life doesn't start until I become this that I want to be or that I have my house or that I'm a father or that I'm a, a wife or whatever, whatever, whatever. No. That you look at the top of that you're in and you say, God, give me my ministry right now, my work right now, my whatever right now, and let me do it with all the love that you have shown me and that I want to show other people. God has given me a huge blessing by calling me to be a teacher. Oh, a huge blessing. But here's the thing. Even in being a teacher, I have different etapas of being a teacher. 
Okay, for instance, I first started just helping with the kinder and the colegio girls. And then I the next year I moved into a little bit of the colegio girls and a lot of the new class that Sadie and Junior and Ismar were in, right? And then after that, it was another etapa. And now it's with you guys in another etapa. And soon, <laughs> I'm going to go to mass. This etapa is going to end. You know, half of you guys are leaving this year, then the next half of you guys are leaving next year. In two years, I will literally have no one I ever started with teaching. And, oh, <laughs> don't want to do that. But anyway, I know that God will give me another feeling of love for those kids, right? But everything's in etapas, guys. And my desire for you is that you find what God wants you to do in every etapa of your life and that he gives you a passion to do it and then you do it with all the love that God has put in your heart and that you, you let that love grow every day and that you show it to people. It's my desire for myself as well because I don't show love like I need to in every area of my life either. So we need to learn that. And that's what we're going to do in verse number 13. I mean, chapter 13, but how cool is the verse that Pablo said? Go ahead and find the gift. Go ahead and find the best gift that you think is the best gift to, ha to have and, and the best gift that God gave you and, and use it. But I'm going to tell you a more excellent way, and that is to whatever God called you to do, do it with all the love, because if you don't have love, you have nothing. Huh? Super cool chapters. Let's get into it. Okay, to recap this in 30 seconds, go. Chapter 12 is about spiritual gifts. It's talking about the clear key to clear discernment of if they have the Holy Spirit or not, diversity of gifts, so that all the same spirit, giving spiritual gifts, all one body, staying unified no matter what gift, and list of the gifts. Let's get into chapter 13. We know that chapter 13 is the love chapter, so let's go ahead and read that. I'm going to read verse 31 first, and then go into verse 1 in chapter 13. Procurar pues los dones mejores, mas yo os muestro un camino aún más excelente. Si yo hables, hablaste lenguas humanas y angélicas, y no tengo amor, vengo a ser como metal que resuena o símbolo que retien, retien, ti, retiñe. Y si tuviese profecía y entendiese todos los misterios y toda ciencia, y si tuviese toda la fe, de tal manera que trasladase los montes y yo no tengo amor, nada soy. Y si repartiese todos mis bienes para dar de comer a los pobres, y si entregase mi cuerpo para, que, para ser quemado y no tengo amor, de nada me sirve. El amor es sufrido, es benigno. El amor no tiene envidia. El amor no es actancioso. No se evanece. No hace nada indebido. No busca lo suyo. No se irrita. No guarda temor, rencor, perdón. No se goza de la injusticia, mas se goza de la, de la verdad. Todo lo sufre, todo lo cree, todo lo espera, todo lo soporta. El amor nunca deja de ser, pero las profecías se acabarán y se serán las lenguas y la ciencia acabará. Porque en parte conocemos y en parte profetizamos, mas cuando venga lo perfecto, entonces lo que es ma lo que es en parte se acabará. Cuando yo era niño, hablaba como niño, pensaba como niño, juzgaba con como niña, niño. Mas cuando yo fui hombre, dejé lo que era de niño. A ahora vemos por espejo oscuramente, mas entonces veremos cara a cara. Ahora conozco en parte, pero entonces conoceré como fui conocido. Y ahora permanecen la fe, la esperanza y el amor, estos tres, pero el mayor de ellos es el amor. Okay, so my question for you guys is, what you're doing right now, your position in life, student, 
if you have work, daughter, son, friend, your positions in life, are you doing it with love? I'm not asking you if you love what you do. Yes, Michelle Sky, I love school and I put my heart into it. I love my family, I love being in the family, and I put my heart into it. No, no, I'm asking you, do you do what you do with love for the people that are involved? Okay? Not that you love what you do. For example, for me, I love being a teacher. I do. I love being a teacher. Okay? But the question for our heart when we read this chapter is, are we doing what we do with love for the people involved with it, not for the thing we do? Okay? That's what we need to examine in our hearts while we do this part of the chapter. This chapter. Okay, here we go in verses 1 through 3. Without love, nothing matters. Look at verses 1 through 3. Si yo hablase lenguas humanas y angélicas y no tengo amor, vengo a ser como metal que resuena. That means it does nothing, right? You're just banging it. Boo, 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 boo. Sin, or símbolo que retiñe. Y si tuviese profecía y entendiese todos los misterios y toda ciencia, y si tuviese toda la fe de tal manera que trasladase los montes, okay, everything powerful, meaning like you, you do your job so well. Yes, God gave you the, 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 the don of um, prophecy, gave you the don of being a teacher, gave you the don of being the, the pastor, gave you the don of being a Sunday school teacher, gave you the don of being an encourager, gave you the don of um, being a great helper. And, and man, you're famous for how great you are in your job, right? That's basically what he's saying. That's how, uh, how you could have all of that. You know, tengo amor, nada soy. Nah, soy. So you say, look, I could be the most famous missionary in these parts of the world. Everybody knows me when I come to the thing. But if I don't have love, I'm nothing. I'm nothing, he said. Look what it says in verse number three. Y si repartieses todos mis bienes para dar de comer a los pobres. I'm going to give everything for everyone. Y si entregase mi cuerpo para ser quemado. Right? You're going to look at the person and be like, look, at they, they give everything for what God has called them to do. They sacrifice everything for what God has called them to do. Y no tengo amor. De nada me sirve. Okay? So, um, what are we going to see in a second? We're going to see the, um, the list of what amor is, but you want to see the very first thing, without love, nothing we do matters. Nothing we do matters. We can't stand in front of God and call it something for him if we're not doing it for the people that he called us to love, right? Love God, love people. He put those two commandments together on purpose. Love me with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And why do you think he said as yourself and do unto others like you would have them do unto you so that you would know how to love because you know how you want people to love you, right? So then treat them that way as well. And if not, we're nothing. Okay, let's see the list. Okay, this is a description of love and the action of love. Okay, it's not just a description, but this is all action stuff, man. you got to show your love through your actions. So I want you to notice a few things when you read the list. Yes, it's a list, like a checklist. Like, okay, my in order to love, I should do this. In order to love, I should do this. I should be this. I should be this. I should be this, okay? But the other thing that you need to look at is that it is action. You do it with action. Number three, you need to look at it like this. It's also free fruit. Significa that if you say that you love, you should see this as fruit. That it's not necessarily like, oh, I got to be patient today because that's love. Oh, I got to be um, so free. I've got to, you know, I want to things today because that's love. I've got to be fair today because that's love. No, but if you really love, then that kind of stuff is going to come out of your heart. Are you patient with the people? Because that means you love them. Yeah, we lucha with patience, of course, but do you have to force yourself to be patient with people all the time? Yes, there are times, right? But it should be fruit, 
okay? It should be fruit that we do these things for love because if not, then where is the love coming from? Is it coming from obligation or is it coming really from love? Is it really love? So you need to look at those three things. One, yes, it's a description. It's a checklist. But two, it's also an action. And three, it is fruit. So it should be coming out of you naturally. It should be not, not naturally, okay? But it should be coming out of you like a fruit because there's real love in your heart. And you're not just doing it like, okay, let me act patient. Let me act this. Let me act this right? But that description is to help you know what love is, but then that you, you focus on letting it grow in your heart so that it's also fruit in your life, okay? So go to the verse number four through seven. El amor es sufrido, es benigno, el amor no tiene envidia. So es sufrido, that means, yes, it aguantas things, okay? It's going to go through hard times and you're not going to give it up. The love that you have for your friends, the love that you have for your family, the love that you have for your future future husband or wife, the love that you have for your students, the love that you have for people that you lead, the love that you have for your compañeros, the love that you have for anybody that got anybody that God has put in your life to learn something from or 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 whatever the reason is God has put them in your life that you are willing to suffer for that love and not give it up. It's benigno, that means it's kind. It thinks about that other person, okay? It, it, it takes care of the other person. No tiene envidia, okay? Nothing good comes from celo. Nothing good comes from envidia. Um, so do you do you say that it's your your relationship with that person? But the parents just they had all that envidia because it messes things up. El amor no es jactancioso. It doesn't make the other person try, you don't make the person try to feel bad. And the is when you feel down here because you put the person up here like, oh, I want what they have, et cetera, et cetera. Jactancioso is when you put yourself up here and you make the person feel like they're down here so that you can feel better, okay? You don't do that either. No se envanece. Okay, that means, again, you don't make yourself, you know, look like the best person in the world and then feel so small. No hace nada indebido. That means like you don't do anything where you're like, what you go? Why would you treat me like that? Why would you do that um, to me? You don't do anything hurtful. No busca lo suyo, okay? You don't look for the advantage that you get out of it, what you get out of it. So many people, guys, so many people are, are in friendships, in and they have conocidos y todo eso just to use them just to use them and when you're using the person you say that it's not for that but think about it guys are there people in your life that would go away if you stopped doing for them what you do for them Stop being their being their person to to always care hard to stop being their person to chisme hard to stop being the person that they get money from stop being the person that um they call only when they're bored stop being the person that they only call when they want to do bad things but um when they're with other friends you're not their real friend right would you lose relationships in your in your life if you would stop letting people use you okay well that's not love. Okay, doesn't mean that you de high completely because I'm more sufrido, but that means that you work on your relationship with that person if they're willing to so that it is a healthy relationship, okay? But if not, then you don't have to let people beat you up. That's not what sufrido means, okay? That's not what sufrido that means. Sufrido sometimes means like it's going to hurt that you have to distance yourself away from that person, but it's unhealthy to be like this with that person, okay? Because letting someone just use you is not sufrido, okay? That is making them build a mania and a habit that's unhealthy for them, whether you're there or not, and it's unhealthy for you because you're an esclavo, not a friend, okay? So that's not sufrido. But, um, so it should not, no busca lo suyo. Do you have people that you do that to in your life? That if they stop doing for you what they do for you, you would just not have any use for them. Cuidado, now I examine deep because if you're getting stuff from people and that's what, how your relationship is based on, you may not even realize that if they stop doing for you, you would find no use for them. So you got to dig deep on that one and let the Holy Spirit examine your heart if you treat people like that. No se irrita. Let me give you an example. Like, are there certain friends that you talk to only when you're bored? Are you, there are certain friends that you talk to only when you're sad? Are there certain friends that you talk, are certain, or do you only go to your parents when you need something? You only go to somebody else when you need something. Then you're using those people. That's not a relationship, okay? You got to work on that. 
okay? We can always be better. In our, we can always be better in our relationships. We can always improve. We can always stop using people more and be buscando their bien, not our bien, okay? No se irrita. You don't just get mad all the time, okay? Because here's another part of it. Um, or in English, it's not easily provoked, okay? Man, they do one thing and pff, you're easily provoked. It shouldn't be like that, okay? Um, y no guarda rencor. Guys, some of these are going to be our strengths and some of these are going to be our weaknesses. And you got to find it and ask God to help you that those things aren't going to come in, in obstacles of the love that God has called you to have. Okay? No guarda rancor. Guys, in that, too, love is like this. You got to get the rancor out of your heart for everybody, no matter if that has anything to do with the other relationships in your life. Because... The other relationships in your life will be affected if you keep rancoring your heart, no matter if it's with that person or not. No se irrita también. If you have a problem with that, if you get mad easily, then it doesn't matter if you get mad with one person easily and that's the relationship that is um, affected. All, eventually, all of them are going to be affected because you build a habit of being irritated easily or you have so much problems with that one relationship in your life that you're affecting the other relationships in your life because of it. So you got to... Work on those things personally and inside certain relationships, okay? Number six, no se goza de la injusticia. Okay, don't, who we talk about this one all the time, right? If you're helping people do the wrong thing, that ain't love. That ain't love para nada, okay? If you have a close friendship or a close relationship with somebody and you're letting them just keep going, going, going into their sin, you're not saying anything, you're not using the fact that God has placed you in their life to help them, that's not love. Okay, you helping them sin, that's not, that's not love. You going to them to sin with them, that's not love. Okay, don't rejoice in iniquity. Um, más se goza de la verdad. Okay, you animar en edificar to do the right. Then look what it says in 7, todo sufre, todo cree, todo espera y todo lo soporta. Okay, that's for love. Now, um, we're not going to get into it right now, but toxic relationships, I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, I'm talking about friends too that suffocate because they're utilizando the relationships. I'm not saying don't be friends with them anymore. I'm saying work on it. Help them too. You are the mature Christian sometimes and they are not. Help them too. But if not, it's okay to separate from people. It doesn't mean you don't love them. It doesn't mean you don't love them. What is love that you busca their bien, their bien, okay? Look, if it's just inconvenient to be with somebody, take an inconvenience, right? But if it's hurtful to be with somebody, then space is needed, okay? And reconciliation can come. Reconciliation can come. Okay, but space is needed. Now, in a marriage, we know that there's all different passages that apply to that, okay, because God does not want us to divorce. But in any relationship, reconciliation can come. You don't give up on people. But there's going to be a tapas when you're super close to people, and there's going to be a tapas where you have to be separated more from those people. It's not falta de amor, okay? If in your, in your heart you're trying to do the best for them, then it's always going to be love, okay? It's always going to be love. But you need to understand one thing. You are not perfect people. You're not superhumans, which means you can't take on everyone's problems either. And you have to realize what is healthy for you, not because you're buscando your suyo. It's because you can't be loving to other people if someone's taking all your emotion out of you, okay? You cannot. So it is okay to seek God's guidance if you need distance from people. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. If you have questions, though, we can talk about it more definitely. Okay, let's go to verse 8. Through 13, this is the very end, okay? What is more important? Look what it says in verse 8. El, el amor nunca deja de ser. Okay, amor doesn't, I love you today, but I don't love you tomorrow. That's not what amor is, you guys. So look at relationships. You're doing the love languages thing. Look at those six relationships that you put on a piece of paper next week and say, do I, do I really love these people? 
like I'm supposed to with 1 Corinthians 13, okay? Todo, um, el amor nunca de, deja de ser, pero las profecías se acabarán y se serán las lenguas y la ciencia acabará. What is he saying? What is more important? It's the love, you guys. No matter what don God gave you. Guys, your education is not going to matter in heaven, right? Shh. Don't let that this study mark you to do it right now because you need it on earth, okay? But what I'm saying for me, me being a Mayesha, that part is going to eventually not matter. But whether I loved and, and helped people come to Christ because of that love, that will always matter for eternity, okay? Um, look what it says in verse 9. Porque en parte conocemos y en parte profetizamos, mas cuando venga... Lo perfecto, entonces lo que es en parte se acabará. He's saying, look, prophecies, prof what is prophecy? What is preaching? What is teaching? What is, what are all those gifts? It's to get you on this earth, help to do what God wants you to do on this earth, because we only know in part. Prophecies were God's words in part, because we didn't have everything. We don't have the wisdom that God had, right? But love will never die. There is love on the earth and there is love in heaven. So what are you going to invest in more? What are you going to invert here in more? Love. Because it will always be there. Look what it says in verse number 11. Cuando era niño, hablaba como un niño. Pensaba como un niño, juzgaba como un niño. Mas cuando yo fui hombre, dejé lo que era de niño. Same thing that happened in Ephesians, right? We're not going to be this way anymore. We're going to be more, more mature. And in that maturing, we need to realize that love is the most important thing. Thing. And it's true, you guys. You guys will realize that as you get more mature in your walk with God, that loving people and loving God with all your heart is the most important thing no matter what God has called you to do. Number 12, ahora vemos por espejo oscuramente, mas entonces veremos cara a cara. Right now what we're doing on earth, we only see in part why it all makes sense, but eventually, entonces veremos cara a cara, eventually we're going to be standing face to face with God. And eventually we're going to get all the understanding in the world. And eventually we're going to see why all of it was worth it. And I hope the day that you see that all of it was worth it is the day that you get to look back and realize that you lived your life like all of it was worth it for God. Okay, ahora conozco en parte, pero entonces conoceré como fui conocido. Y ahora permanecen la fe, la esperanza y el amor. Estos tres. Right here in the world, we need faith, we need hope, we need love. But el mayor de ellos es el amor. So examine every person in your life. Are you loving them like you're supposed to? Where does it come from that you love God first? You got to love God first and you got to figure out from his word what love is because the love that the world is going to teach you is not anything like this love. It's not anything like the love that God wants you to have. You can't, you can't learn love from the world, you guys. And that's exactly why um, sanctification has to come from the word of God because if not, it, where, where you learn how, how to live you learn how to live in the world, and the world ain't going to teach you how to live for God. God's going to teach you how to live for God and how to love for God and love the people in your life and respect them and put them first so that you can help them better. One, know how to become a Christian, or two, animar them and edificar them to be the best that they can for Christ so that everybody can stand cara a cara con God one day and say, God, the life I lived was for you, for what you did for me. Okay? There you go. That's love. Okay, so remember the commandments that God gives about love. Look what it says right here in, in this chapter. Without love, nothing we do matters. Description of love and the action of love. Remember, it's a checklist, it's action, and it's also the fruit that should be coming out of our lives if we love properly. What is more important? It is love. Remember what John 13 says? John 13 is where we first start out the last supper that Jesus has with his disciples. And it says at the very beginning of that chapter, he loved them until the end. Love never dies. Pray that God helps you to love like God loved us. Remember in 1 John 4, what did it say? We love because no man has seen God at any time. And if we love, they will see God on this earth if they can see love. What did Jesus tell his disciples? They will know that you are Christians by your love. They will know that you are my child by your love. So that they maybe one day that they can become your child too. They can become 
his child too. Okay, that part he didn't say. That part we know is applied. Okay, remember, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Why does God say that? So we know how to love because we know how people want us, how we want people to love. Okay, so let's love the proper way. Look at your relationships. Ask yourself, do you love like this? Where do you got to improve? Is it with the rancor? Is it with being sufrido? Is it with being benigno? Is it being with too hot ansioso, too much envidia, that you don't support things, that you don't bear all things? What is the part of the love that we don't do well so that we can work on it in our lives, okay? And love better for God. Nothing we do for God is in vano. Everything we do for ourselves is always in vano, okay? So you may not know, just like Paul said, we don't always know right now why loving people is going to make that big of a difference. But God knows, and we're never going to see it cara a cara. So it's worth it. Okay? Love you guys. Have a great day.